Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus today. Thank God for another opportunity, praise God, to come and share with you the precious words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is worthy to be praised. Praise God. I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. So glad to be coming to you this morning on this Sunday, Sunday morning. Praise God. We felt led in the leading of the Lord as I did on last Sunday to get up and to share with you uh, the precious words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on, praise God, this April, the, what is it, the 11th, somewhere in the 11th, I believe it is. But praise God, let's, uh, praise God, uh, look in our word today in the book of Philippians, Philippians, praise God, he is the answer. Christ is the answer to all of our problems today. Praise God, if we only put our trust in him and uh, praise God, let him lead and guide us by his spirit today. Hey, we'll see. We'll see that we'll have a, a praise God, a more clearer direction as to what to do in this life. Uh, praise God, as we hopefully expect to graduate to the next life. But uh, praise God, uh, the word of God for you today is Philippians one, first chapter. Look with me in your Bibles this morning, first chapter, Philippians one, and we're gonna look at verse nineteen there. I'll start at nineteen. It says here, Paul says, for I know that this will, this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers, he said, and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or whether it be by death, he says, for me, verse 21, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Father, we bless you today. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again, Lord, to pray, praise God, expound on your word today. We pray your leading of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you'll just uh, praise God, uh, anoint this speaker, anoint the ears of your hearers today, that we might hear what thus saith the Lord. And we'll give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, Lord. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen and praise God. We are going to take our thought from that 20, 21st verse there. Paul says, praise God, uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live it is Christ, and for me to die, it is gain. Brother Pierce, uh, on our uh, weekly broadcast, he he mentioned that scripture there. Praise God! And that scripture kind of kind of stuck in my craw a little bit there. Praise God! For me to live, and we just just to live is Christ. That's what it is. The life to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And this should be the cry. Actually, it should be the cry of every true believer in Jesus Christ. For me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. Now, now Paul is writing here to, to the, uh, 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 well, to the Philippians. And as a matter of fact, he's in the Philippian jail at this time. Praise God. He's facing a, a, a uncertain death sentence simply because what? He preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, when you preach the gospel and, uh, and the gospel actually is that Christ is the way, the only way. He's the only way to be saved. You know, you we can get along with people as long as we say there are many ways to to come to God, or many ways God's got many names and all. The, if we if we come with that kind of a uh, uh, doctrine, then we we'll be friends to the world. But now our gospel of Jesus Christ is that there's only one way. Christ is the way. He's the truth and the life. And this is what offends most people today. So Paul is in jail because he preached the gospel the one and only gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God. In that verse 20 there, he expresses his number one concern. Praise God. His, in verse 20, his number one concern here uh, in this life, and he said, it's simply here to magnify a Christ, whether it be in his body or whether it be by life or whether it be by death. It didn't matter which one. He, all he wanted to do was to glorify and to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, praise God, should be uh, the goal of all of us, really, all true believers. He believed that Christ lived a perfect life. 
For the believers. For the believers. That he died also a perfect death. For who? For the believers. Now that's what Paul, on the cross, this is what Paul believed uh, sincerely in his heart. Praise God. And although he was facing now, remember now, he's in a Philippian jail. He's facing uncertain death at this time. Yet in this very short letter here, I'll praise God, this short, over 15 times, over 15 times, Paul expresses his joy in Christ. Praise God. His joy in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of uh, what could be his last, uh, praise God, letter that he could write. But in the midst of all this, at the same time, he exalted believers to rejoice. In the Lord, with him, praise God, <laughs> quite noble of him, rejoice in the Lord with him, be joyful, praise God. Evidently, he had that joy in his heart, praise God. And if we look at um, uh, just a few of those scriptures that he exhort uh, the believers to be joyful, even when peril times of upon us, when we're going through, praise God, it doesn't matter. Philippians 1, 4, he said, always in, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. Praise God, that is. He said, with joy, I'm making a request from you. And then if you go on over to um, 1 and 18, 1 and 18, it says, he says, now, what then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice. Then he said again, yea, and I will rejoice. Praise God, the joy of the Lord was upon him. And look on down at 25. Go over to 25, one, uh, chapter 125 there. And he says here, and having this confidence, praise God, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your fatherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. So now he's still talking about that joy, the joy, praise God, that he's experiencing even in the midst of peril. Go over to two, chapter two there, in verse two, chapter two and verse two, and Paul says here, uh, chapter two, verse two, he said, fulfill ye my joy, fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded having the what? The same love being on one accord and of one mind. Praise God. Fulfill ye my joy, is what Paul says there. And look at 2.16. Just going on over, just 2.16. He says, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither have I labored in vain. He said, yea, and if I be offered upon this sacrifice and service of your faith, he said, I joy. Then again, he said, I joy and I rejoice with you all. Praise God. So we see he, the joy was a main component in uh, Paul's uh, uh, life and at this time and his ability to continue in the midst of so much opposition. Praise God, the joy. He had that joy of the Lord. And look, we'll go over to three then, Philippians 3. Now, well, look at, now, well, look at 228. I see another one there, 228. And Paul says, I sent him therefore more carefully that when you see him again, you may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful. He exhorts the believers. Praise God. When I send my, my, my brother to you to bring you these good tidings, I want you to rejoice. Is what he said. Look at three and one. Three and one. Paul said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Hmm? To write the same to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Praise God. Look on down, look on down, look on down at three them. He said, for we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit, he says, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and we have no confidence. That's what Paul said. We have no confidence in the flesh. No, no. We rejoice in Jesus Christ. Look at four and one. Go on over the four and one. Four, four and uh, uh, four and one there. Uh, Paul says, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy, you are my joy, and you are my crown. So stand fast in the Lord, he says, my dearly beloved. Look on down at four again. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. Praise God. And again, praise God, I say rejoice. Look over at verse 10, 4 and 10. I, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care for me has flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity, is what Paul says there. So again, he's exalting the believers here, praise God, to rejoice, to rejoice, to be joyful, even when you go through in every chapter, in every chapter, in this short book here, he exhort the believers to be joyful in the Lord. And uh, Nehemiah, we know what Nehemiah, Nehemiah 3 said, Nehemiah 3 said, the joy of the Lord 
is our strength. Praise God. And when we can rejoice in the face of opposition, praise God, then we can, praise God, we can do what God called us to do. But we got to be able to rejoice, even in the midst of trials and tribulation, believing that God is not only able, but God will. God will enable us to be victorious because we are truly this morning, we're more than conquerors. Yes, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, with this mindset of rejoicing in trials and tribulation, Paul could boldly say, for me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. He could say that, praise God, joyfully from his heart. But now, just what is it that he means by these two statements here, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain? What do you mean by these two statements here? Praise God. Let's look at them one by one here. To live is Christ, he said. For me to live is Christ. Now, Paul here declare, he declares that Christ is the number one reason, the number one reason for his living that propels him to keep on keeping on, his purpose for living. Praise God. Christ is that number one. Praise God. He viewed uh, life as just an opportunity, his whole life as an opportunity to glorify the Lord. And every believer ought to be there. That's what we ought to be. Praise God. My life is about Christ. It's about glorifying the Lord. It's not about me. Me died. Christ lives in me. Galatians 2.20. Most of us know that by memory. Paul said, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. Paul said the life that I now live. Praise God. My number one reason for living is to glorify the Lord. Praise God. My purpose for living is to glorify the Lord. He looked at life as just one big opportunity for me to shine the spotlight upon the Lord not upon himself now, but upon the Lord. See, now, Paul, he, he's unlike many, many in the world today, whose motto basically is, uh, for me to live is to get rich. Praise God. That seemed to be the obsession with the world today. For me to live is to get rich. And I mean, you got church folks involved in this too now, to make as much money as I can, to become financially secure, as, as financially secure as I possibly can. Praise God. Praise God. But now, uh, Paul wasn't of that mind. And, and, and a lot of people, this is, all, this is all they think about. This is all they have on their mind. Day and night. How can I prosper? How can I do this? And how can I do that? Praise God. But Paul understood, praise that acquiring riches here, worldly riches, that is. Acquiring worldly riches wasn't something the true believer, no, 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 should be overly concerned about. We should we should be. Because well, he said in Philippians 4 and 19, the same book here, my God, my God shall support supply all, talking about the believers now, all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. My God, he'll do that, Paul says there. And we know back over there, Romans 8, 17, uh, we know he said that we all, the believers that is now, we're heirs of God and we're joint heirs with Christ. Praise God. What, what do you mean by that, though, Pastor? Well, he means that all that um, uh, belong to Christ belongs also to the believers to the body of Christ. What is Christ? It is ours. Praise God. That's basically what he said. And 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 and, and I believe that. I believe that. I believe what is what 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 is it? praise God. What he has belonged to me. Praise God. Well, because I, I if you look at Psalm 50, I like that Psalm 50 there. Look at Psalm 50, uh 10 through 12 there. Praise God. Most of us know that Jesus said, Lord said, Yeah, for every beast of the field is mine. It's mine. It's mine, he said. The cattle upon a thousand Heals of mine. I know all that verse that happened there. He said, I know all the fowls of the mountain. Now, that's what he said. And the wild beasts of the field, they are mine. And then verse 12, he said, if I was hungry, if I was hungry, praise God, I wouldn't tell thee. I wouldn't tell you. Why won't you tell us, Lord? Because he said, the world is mine. Hmm? And the fullness there are. See, all that belong to God belong to Christ. Now, you know, and all that belong to Christ belong to the believers, the body of Christ. Praise God. And I believe that today. You can believe it today. Praise God if you trust in the Lord as your Savior today. In Acts 3 and 6, Peter 
at the gate with that lame man. We most of us remember that. Peter, pray God, he looked to get some arms from him, something. I'm going to help for himself. But Peter and them sold him and said, seven gold have I none, praise God. But such as we have, we'll give it unto you. Praise God. What did Peter get that old guy? What did Peter give that lame man at the gate? Praise God. He gave him what? The power of God. The healing power of God. He introduced him to the Lord, to the power of God. And that's what we're all about. Praise God. That's my, my life is about living for Christ, introducing Christ, proclaiming Christ to the whole world wide world. He gave him the healing power of God and it's worth more than all the gold and the money in this world that so many people are obsessed with. In other words, chasing it, chasing it, only chasing it everywhere they go. Praise God. But now, so we don't, we don't need to spend all of our lives worrying about, praise God, financial situations, which is definitely in obsession with people today, even people in the church. But we don't need to do that because our God promise to praise God to give us our daily bread. The Lord said, I'll feed you. I'll give you your, I am your bread. Praise God. That's what the Lord said. He's not a man that he should lie. I believe every word God said, his word will not return void. It will not return empty. It will not be unfulfilled. Whatever God says, you can take it to the bank. Praise God. I believe that in all my heart. Paul said for me to live for me to live is Christ. Praise God. Meaning that uh, I live no, no more. No more, Paul said. Do I live to elevate myself? You know, project myself, you know, to be famous, you know, uh, praise God, to uh, be, uh, to flaunt my education, to be admired by other people. Paul said, no, 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 I don't, I don't live for that reason anymore. That may have been part of his reasons, he says here at one time, but I don't live for that anymore. Praise God. And, uh, and if you look at Philippians 3, look at 3 and verse 4 there. 3 and verse 4 again. Chapter 3 there, and we're going to look at um, uh, uh, 4 through 8 there. Though I might also, he says, have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he has well off, he might trust in the flesh. Paul said, I got more reasons. Why, Paul? He said, I was circumcised the eighth day. And oh, he, he thought that was a big, big thing there. And it, it really was at that time of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, Pharisees concerning zeal. He said, I persecuted the church. Praise God. I thought I was doing something good here, touching the righteousness, which is in the law. Paul said, I was blameless. But what things were gained to me? All these things that I used to put so much stock in, praise God, elevate myself. Uh, but what things were gained to me? I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Praise God. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. So what Paul says here for me to live is Christ. All these other things that I used to value, people applauding me, praise God, for being zealous, for being blue blood, for being a, a, a Israelite indeed. You know, praise God, I was applauded. But he said, these things don't mean nothing to me anymore. And, and every true believer, when you're converted, Praise God, old things pass away. Hallelujah, behold, all things become new. Praise God, become brand new. Just knowing Christ, Paul said, I just want to win him. Just knowing Christ is enough. It was enough for Paul. Praise God, it'll be enough for me and you if you ever get truly, truly, truly saved and converted. For me to live is Christ. In other words, Paul says, as long as, what did that song say? As long as I got King Jesus, as long as I got King Jesus, Praise God, whether I've got little, Paul says, or whether I've got much, it don't matter. Praise God, as long as I got King Jesus. Look at four, look at four of them. Look at Philippians 4, still in Philippians now. Look at four, Philippians 4, and we're going to look at 11 there. 4 and 11. Paul says here, not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatever state I am, Paul said, I've learned whatever situation, whatever state I am, I've learned to be content. I know how to be abased. He said, I know how to abound. Even, praise God, uh, everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry here, both to abound and to suffer need. Then he got that very famous statement there in 413, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthened me? Paul said, whether I got little or whether I got much, 
Praise God. As long as I got King Jesus. Huh? Praise God. I can make it. I can make it. Praise God. Paul says, if God bless me with plenty, if God have the best with plenty, I'm happy. I'm happy. Are you happy today? Huh? If he send me trials and poverty, Paul says my way, he said, I'm still happy. Praise God, it don't matter. I'm still happy because why? For me to live. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Praise God. Paul understood. Praise he understood. Also, that God does not promise us uh, a life uh, on bed and roses, as we used to say something to that uh, expression there, bed and roses. God don't promise us nothing like that. No, no. It's not in the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. He don't say that. Praise God. In John 16, uh, uh, 30, 30, somewhere in that neighborhood, 31, 32, 33, somewhere like that, he said, in the world, you should have tribulations. That was God said, but be joyful. Be of good cheer. Be joyful. Like Paul was happy. Praise God. Christ said, I have overcome the world. Praise God. That's in John 16. In 2 Timothy uh, 3, uh, in 12, uh, the Lord said, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Praise God. But we can have joy. We can have joy. We can have peace in the midst of our storms. If, praise God, Christ is your life. Praise God. He's a very definition of what life is to me and to you as a believer. Praise God. We can weather any kind of storm in the world. Praise God. The believer's life is, 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 is not based on circumstances and situation. The believer's life is the person. Praise God. That person is Jesus Christ himself. Praise God. Colossians 3. Colossians 3. 3. It says, our life is hid. Praise God. Our life is hid with Christ in God. Praise God. We got a life that's hid with Christ in God. It's a spiritual life now. It's a spiritual life. You can't see it. Praise God. You really can't touch it. You can't touch it. You can't contaminate it. It's a perfect life. It's Christ's life. It's hid. Praise God. With Christ in God. Praise God. First Corinthians 2. Uh, 9 and 10, it, it says, uh, basically, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God had prepared for them, what? That know him, that love him. Then at verse 10 says, but God has revealed it to them, uh, unto us, by his spirit. He revealed it unto us by his spirit. In other words, it's a revelation knowledge. Praise God. It's revelation knowledge. It's new life. We got new life. We got a life that's hid with Christ in God. Praise God. Hid from our contamination. Even this old man in us. It's hid from the old man. Praise God. Praise God. Again, the life of the believers now that we have in Christ is hid. That's what it says. From the world. From the knowledge of the world. Praise God. From the ears and the eyes of the world, the new life itself. Now they can see the expression of the new life, but they can't see the new life. Paul said, for me to live is Christ. Praise. Meaning that since he considered himself to be the, the greatest sinner, and he did, praise God. I, one place, Paul called himself the chief sinner, didn't he? Praise God, the chief sinner called himself a, a wretched man. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me, he says, from this body of death? See, Paul considered himself to be a great sinner. And Christ in him had removed all of his guilt. Praise God, all of the guilt of his mind and conscience had been removed through Christ being in him. And since that had taken place, this monumental and blessed removal of that guilt in his heart, he felt he owed all his life to Christ. For me to live, he says, is Christ. Praise God. That Romans 8, y'all know what he says in that Romans 8, don't you want? There is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And that was a burden that was lifted off of his shoulder. It was a burden that was lifted off my shoulder. Huh? Praise God to know that in Christ, Christ in me, me in Christ removes the guilt. Praise God. He took my head, my sin upon him. Praise God. And to know that brings great joy, great joy to our all shame and all our guilt. Praise, it's gone. And I thank God for Jesus this morning. I'm so happy, praise God, that I have a good conscience. I have a clear conscience today. Though I, uh, I've i been a rascal in my life, praise God, but Christ took all that upon himself on the cross. And I therein do rejoice today. Praise God, Psalm 32 and 1. 
says, uh, blessed is he whose, what? Whose transgressions are forgiven him. Praise God. Whose sins are covered. Praise God. My sins are forgiven. And Paul, that's why he said for me to live is Christ. For me to live is Christ because all my sins have been forgiven me. Praise God. That, and that's something to rejoice over right there. To know that this won't come up against you as when you stand before God. And one day we're going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Praise God. For me to live, Paul said, is Christ. Praise God. And meaning, meaning what, Paul Pastor? Again, meaning that, praise God, he realized that all of his imperfections, all of his imperfections were made perfect. Praise God. Christ is our perfection. He, in his righteousness and through his shed blood, praise God, we have been deemed to be righteous. Praise God. We are perfect in Christ. And that's what the Father demands of his children be therefore perfect even as your father in heaven is perfect. That's what God demands of us. And if we look at uh, Philippians 3 there, look at Philippians 3 and, uh, praise God, look at 3 and we'll look at 12 and 13. 3 and 12, 13. 3, 12 and 13. Paul said, not as though I had already attained, praise God, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but what? This one thing I do, forgetting, 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 forgetting those things which are always good to be able to forget, praise God. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Praise God, Paul was rejoicing in the Lord. He pressing toward the mark. But now you got to be able to forget for the past, forget the disappointments, praise God, and realize that in Christ, we have perfection. We have perfect righteousness, praise God. So I can say for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Praise God. I can say that through all my heart and with all of my heart, praise God, because what Christ has done on the cross for my sins and for your sins, praise God. But now as we close, look at that last part. We're just going to touch on the last. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. To die, Paul says, for me is gain. To Paul now, dying is was just the beginning of living. Dying to himself. Dying to yourself in this life, not just in that judgment life, the judgment seat of Christ, but in this life, when you die to yourself, then you can begin to live, but you can't have both of them. Amen. Paul says that it's just the beginning of my life. To die is gain, he says. Dying is the beginning of my life. When our hidden life is no longer hidden, when you die to yourself, that which is hidden began to come forth and to express itself, illuminate you, and give you that great joy and that great peace that passes all understanding. But only those who have Christ's life in them can truthfully say, for me to die is great gain. Only those who have been born again of the Spirit of God, and you know you've been changed, only these people, only you can say, for me to die is gain. Because it is then, and only then, praise God, only then, when we have departed this earthly life, when we shall see him, and we shall be just like him. Praise God, when we depart this life here. Praise God. But, you know, we don't have to wait there. We can start living the life here, though. Look at uh, Philippians 3 there. 3 and, uh, we'll look at 20. Look at 3 and 20 there. 3 and 20. Paul says, for our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile bodies, that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That's what Paul said, according to the working whereby he is able to what, subdue all things unto himself. Praise God. Paul said, one day I'm going to get me a new body. Hmm? I'm going to get it. Looking forward to it. Praise God. Looking forward. Praise God. A glorious body. He's going to change this vile body. For a glorious body. See, he was looking forward to this. To die is gained, is what Paul said. Praise God. I, I'm a winner. Praise God. And we all a winner. Praise God. When we die in the Lord. Praise God. See, Paul understood that this life is just temporary. Have you come to understand that? Yeah, this is not your home. The Bible says we're pilgrims and we're travelers. We're just mm, traveling through. Praise God. That's the mindset of a true believer. Huh? To, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. This is just a temporary life here. 
And praise God, God saved us not for this life. You, I want you to, I want you to grab hold of that. God did not save you and me for this life. No, no, not even from the beginning. Huh? Not for this life, but for eternal life. That eternal life which is to come. What actually which is already in us. We have it in us, but we cannot fully, uh, it, it cannot be fully revealed in us until we lay down this old life. So do you know that? So, so what did that say to me? That, that said to me, Pastor, you need to work on killing, dying, dying to self. You got to work on dying to that old self life. Because the sooner old self life dies, the more the new life can be expressed and illuminated in you and me. But that old life has got to go, praise God. Therefore, we can proudly say, praise God, uh, uh, for, me to, for me to die is gain. Praise God. John 14, I believe it is. The Lord says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I'll receive you into myself. To myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Praise God. The Lord is going to prepare a place for us. Praise God. And that's why Paul said, for me to die. Praise God. It's gain because I'm going to my match. I'm going to my heavenly home. He was looking forward to it. And you know what? Praise God. This world, praise God. <laughs> It, it never has been our, our home. It is not our home now. Never has been. Never will be. Praise God. Like the eagle. You know, though, oh, the Bible talks about the eagle stirring that nest, you know, making it very uncomfortable for her little chicks, you know, putting thorns down into the nest there. And then they can't no longer sit in that nest and feel comfortable because they're in the little, little thorns are sticking them in the little hindy part. So they began to long to get up out of there, go for a better home. See now, so God the Father what he does. He allows trials and tribulation in his life for me and you. Huh? He never intended for it to be easy down here. He don't want you to get at, be at home down here. A lot of the trials and tribulation you have today are the best friends that you can ever have because God don't want you comfortable here. He don't want you comfortable. He wants you to prepare. He wants you to prepare for the new life. You got to start down here. Huh? Praise God. God, uh, God, God allowed tribulation to bombard our earth and lives so many times, praise God, so that we begin to long for our heavenly home. We have a desire to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Praise God, we begin to say, as Paul says here, praise God, for me to, to die is gain. Praise God. That's the attitude. That's why God, so that's why a lot of you are having troubles now. And you're trying to evade those troubles and not to let them work that perfect work in you. And to take that appetite of the world, of other world from you. And get you looking heavenly, looking to your heavenly home, longing for it. Praise God for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. See, many of us were trying to have the best of both worlds. But that's not the will of God for you, my, my brothers and sisters. It's not the will of God. Matthew 6 tells us very plainly that we're not to lay up or store up treasures for ourselves here on this earth. God don't want you to do that. Don't, be, don't get preoccupied like other people. We're not like other people. Praise God. We This little cut glass and shiny stuff down here heck, cannot compare with what we have in store for us. Praise God. First John uh, 2 and 17, uh, it, it says that this world is passing away. This world is going down, down, down. It's designed to go down, down, down. It's not going to get no better. And you're a child of God. Praise God. You shouldn't, you shouldn't look for, we're not even looking at it. We're looking at my, uh, what is to come. To die is gain for me. Praise God. Like Paul, we have been delivered we have been delivered from the, the very fear of death. Praise God, if Christ's life is in you, praise God, we don't fear death. Praise God, as a matter of fact, we kind of looking forward to it. But now, uh, after we complete our mission, I'm going to leave here. Oh, I'm going to die. You're going to die. We're going to die. All of us going to die. No doubt about that. But now, I'm on, an, uh, I'm, on a, I'm on a mission. God got me on a mission. And God going God to allow me. He going to allow me to finish that mission. And when I finish doing what I'm doing right now, I'm out of here. Praise God. How do you oh, see you later, alligator? Praise God. And I have no fear whatsoever. Praise God. Paul didn't have that fear of death. Praise God. If Christ's life is in you, Praise God. In Hebrews 2, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, uh, Paul says, Therefore, as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part 
of the same, is what Paul says. That through death, through death, praise God in Christ, and, and me too, you too, might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Praise God. And then he said in that 15th verse there, and uh, delivered them who through fear of their death, fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Praise God, the believer, you, we don't, praise God, the life is mine, Paul said in one place, the death is mine, praise God, everything, we, death don't control me, I control death, life don't control me, I control life, why, because my life is Christ, to live is Christ, and to die is gain, praise God, my, 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 my question to you today, praise God, this Sunday morning, Praise God, March, what is March 11? I mean, April 11, I'm sorry. April 11, my, my question to you is this. Can you, like the Apostle Paul, honestly say for me to live is Christ and to die is gain? That's my only purpose. Can you, can you really say that with all your heart and mean it today? Praise God. And, and if the Lord should tarry, praise God, and like I say, all of us going to die. Huh? If he tarry, if he tarries, we're going we gonna to move on from here. Praise God. Because the Bible says, it is appointed unto man wants to die. Well, Paul said, wants to die. And after that comes what, brothers? It's going to come to judgment. Hmm? But now the question is, are you ready? Are you ready for that day? Praise God. Have you repented of your sins and asked Christ for his forgiveness? Have you done this today? Praise God. The Bible said today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. The moment you hear my voice, the Lord said, harden not your heart. Praise God. The Lord's calling for you today. Praise God. Will you answer him today? Will you say yes to the Lord today? Will you say yes to your will, Father? Will you realize that those problems you're having right now, those problems, God designed for you to have those problems. You're a child of God. And he wants you, praise God, to fall out of love with this world. He wants you to catch that safety net, the Christ Jesus, that the Lord has thrown out to you. Praise God, and in the midst of your trials, if you're facing a hanging, you're facing a crucifixion like Paul is right now, you can say from your heart, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Praise God. If you like this video, go over and hit that like button over there. And praise God, when you get through hitting that like button, go back and hit that subscribe button. And when I come again, I bring you the word, unadulterated, pure word of God. But until that time, may God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Amen. Thank God.